Oops. Um, I grew up in Manitoba, so I'm not actually from Saskatchewan, um, but I grew up in Winnipeg. I come from a reserve called Hollow Water. It's just a couple hours north of Winnipeg. Um, I would often visit the reserve, but I didn't live there. Uh, I went to school in uh, in like you know the southern part of Winnipeg, so I was a city guy. Um, but I first got into aviation when I was in grade ten. I held my dad pretty uh, in a high standard, or I held him on a pedestal because I really looked up to him. And um, he was asking me one day, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And uh, obviously, in grade nine, grade ten, you have no idea. Um, so he started telling me what he wanted to do when he was younger. Um, he always wanted to do uh, flying or become a pilot. He never did um, because he went a different route, but he said that was one of, uh, one of the things that he's always wanted to do. And um, one day he asked me if I wanted to go uh, try it out. So I went to a school called Harv's Air or uh, a, a flight school called Harv's Air. And uh, they offer introductory flights or um, uh, the same kind of flight that Daniela was saying when she went on her, her first flight. And uh, I ended up going on that flight and ended up really, really enjoying it. And so I did about 10 hours of at that airport or at that, uh, um, that flight school when I was in Winnipeg. And then I just got really busy with, you know, uh, high school sports and, you know, high school homework and everything. And, the, the flying just kind of took a backseat to, uh, to everything else. Uh, and so I graduated uh, high school in 2015 and still didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I applied for the Winnipeg, um, U University of Winnipeg for a, uh, for a science degree. And I really didn't want to. So I, uh, you know, I just, I just kept going and had that, had that, kind of feeling that I'm going to go back to, you know, go, go to University of Winnipeg until one day my dad came back from one of his business trips and he said the pilot was an Indigenous pilot, uh, Indigenous woman, and uh, she, she was talking to my dad and he was just saying that, um, that she, ha she went to this really good flight school in, in Ontario called FNTI and uh, told me that, uh, that I should check it out. So I checked it out actually that night. And I applied and I got in with, you know, I got in, I got, I got accepted within two weeks. And so my whole career changed um, within, you know, three to four weeks. And by that time I was, I was already, you know, done high school for a month. And so I got accepted into FNTI just after high school. And I moved down here actually two months after and moved down here in August of, uh, of 2015. Um, and, you know, ever since then, you know, I really enjoyed flying. Um, took about three years to finish the program, like Daniela was saying. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it really flew by because, you know, we're, it's, a, it's a ton of fun uh, as soon as you get started. Um, so my first year, it was super scary. Um, even though I wanted to, to be away from home, I, I understand that, you know, being away from home isn't easy. And that's what uh, that's what my hardest, I guess, challenge was when I first started up in TI, is that I was, you know, 2,000, 2,500 kilometers away from, from my hometown, no family, no friends out here, and basically starting over. But, you know, you get to, uh, you get to realize that you're not alone because, you know, Daniela comes from northern Saskatchewan, Calgary area. I come from Manitoba, and, you know, it's, uh, it's not really a feeling of aloneness anymore because you know other people are away from their families as well so it's so it's not really um so sorry it's 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 really a community that you kind of build right away because you you have these things in common that you're away from the home um so you know second third year gets a lot easier um that wise but you know the academics get a little bit uh, more in depth with the with the training but you know, you have all the support that you have with uh, with your classmates and friends, and you know, FNTI has a really great support with um, with how they handle their students. You know, if uh, I didn't have a car when I first came out here, so I had to get rides. You know, from uh, from FNTI sometimes. Um, Danielle was saying that she worked, and I also worked at the same time too because you know I did get funding from my band, but it wasn't 
a lot of funding. Like they, they, they paid for my, uh, my program and they gave me an allowance of $500 a month. And that $500 a month was only enough to cover my rent. So I still needed money to, to eat and to do, you know, extracurriculars. But um, so my time off from, from school, I would just go work, you know, 20 hours a week or not at a, at a subway. And, you know, that's how I kind of had the food for, for, for the week. But, you know, it's a, it's a great time. Um, the hardest part was being away from family, but, you know, you make a lot of good friends and, and, uh, and it gets a lot easier from there. So I'll go a little bit into the program again. Um, I'll finish off where Daniela started. So she was saying that multi-IFR um, is more, you know, flying into clouds and that's what I did. So in your third year, you get to choose what, uh, what you wanna do. I chose multi-IFR because I wanted to go airlines at some point um, and that's what you need. So the multi-IFR means you're flying more than one engine on an aircraft and you get to fly into clouds and you get to do, uh, you know, those big commercial flights around, uh, around Canada or those regional flights. So the training location that we have is on Tynanaga. It's a Mohawk area uh, on the Bay of Quinney. The really cool part about this location is that it's one of the oldest aerodromes in Canada. It was used for the military in World War I and World War II. So there's a lot of history um, here. So the airdrome was established in 1917 for the British Commonwealth and many pilots have learned to fly in this area. So that's a, that was one cool thing about knowing that, you know, this airport that we're training on has been around since, you know, the first world war, which is, which is pretty old. Um, we have the hangar, uh, the classroom is on site as well. Um, and then we also have a student residence and the student residence is where you get to make all your friends, you know, and you uh, make dinners together, go to movies together and, you know, do your laundry together. So it's a, it's a pretty good time. Uh, for our aviation crew, we have eight instructors, uh, which uh, consist of, you know, a lot of FNTI graduates. We actually have, one, two, three, four, I'd say about five FNTI graduates out of the eight that are, um, that our instructors are. So, you know, we're really picking up uh, uh, the instructors from the program. We have a CFI, uh, which is our Pete, uh, Pete Miller, and then the Dean of Aviation, that's Joanne. Uh, we have two dispatchers on the site and uh, they handle the radios. They, they help us, you know, um, with the information before we take off and whatnot. We also have student success facilitators and they help you on a day-to-day -day basis where they, you know, if you need groceries, they'll help you out. If you, uh, if you have to go to appointments, they'll, they'll drive you if you don't have a vehicle. So they're very, uh, they're very supportive in that way. We also have the maintenance crew that consists of three, uh, uh, AMEs or maintenance uh, uh, engineers, and they they help our uh, our fleet um, stay in the air. So for our fleet, we have nine Cessna 172s. Those are single engine aircraft. We have a Piper Seminole, which is a twin engine, and we have a Piper Aztec, which is also a twin engine. All of the aircraft that we have are equipped with the old navigation systems, but we also have GPS. So we're, we're Kind of getting with the times and then we also have a dcx max simulator so we so we have a flight simulator as well that's where we do most of our our training in the third year because it's a it's a it's a very good tool to uh do certain situations that we can't do in a plane such as you know emergency uh procedures that we have to practice before you know it actually happens or uh, so we can see it before something does occur so that we are prepared when it does happen so all that being said, um, what you need to apply is, uh, the first thing you need to um, have is you must identify as a First Nation, Métis, or Inuit ancestry. You also need an Ontario secondary school diploma or equivalent. So if you have a Saskatchewan diploma, a Manitoba diploma or whatnot, it'll still be equivalent. You also need a grade 12 English, grade 12 math, uh, for college technology or university math. Uh, and you also, uh, it is recommended that you have grade 11 or grade 12 physics. So it is strongly, strongly recommended because it will help with some of the concepts, but 
it is not mandatory as we you know we'll we'll cover it during our uh, uh, our ground schools and help you understand some of these concepts uh, if you don't have that physics background. So the applicants must submit a letter of intent outline, outlining their reason for applying to the aviation program. So basically just saying um, why you want to get into this field. And then letter may outline the professional goals, commitment to their community or nation and or personal aspirations. And the letter should not be longer than 500 words. And that's all you need to apply. And, you know, there's a little bit uh, more uh, requirements once you get started into the application, but that's the, that, those are the first things uh, you need to get going. Um, I personally want to do uh, commercial flying in the future because my main reason getting into aviation is to travel. Um, so you know, at some point, we're going to get to travel a lot uh, once all this COVID's over and you know, it's going to be a great time. So I really thank you guys for listening to me and listening to uh, Daniela speak. And uh, I hope uh, you guys apply to FMTI and see you guys when, we, uh, when we're able to teach you. Thank you so much. It's Kara here. Um, does anybody have any questions? We've got hand clapping and Shelby uh, says, thank you. So thank you very much. Oh, Christy Jackson is asking, how long does it take to finish school and get your pilot license, pilot's license? For FNTI, it takes about three years. Uh, right now, it's going to probably take a little bit longer to about three and a half to maybe four years, just because COVID's pushing everything back. But normally, it would take about three years to get your pilot license for FNTI. If you go privately to, you know, a, a local, um, uh, a local flight school, it might be a little bit shorter. It might be about one to two years, but it's going to be a whole lot more expensive to go to a private school than uh, than FNTI. Is there somebody with FNTI that will help Indigenous status students uh, find search out funding besides using the student loan? Yeah, so uh, FNTI has their own bursary that they that they help uh, with students. Um, but we also actually have uh, career planning classes as well as uh, our communications classes. And in their communications classes, we actually go through a lot of bursaries for the government of Canada. You know, we, we make, uh, we help students go through applications for Inspire or um, I know we have also a Northern Lights uh, bursary as well for the women. And uh, there's a full class that's dedicated to uh, helping students write their bursary applications or uh, uh, funding applications for that. Well, thank you so very much. Um, you're really in, uh, inspiring. Um, that you are very, the, the two of you, they're the first pilots we've been able to recruit for our video, our, our career conferences. And we would definitely like to, um, to talk to you again when we get to meet face to face and maybe bring you along as, a, as our role models for our, for our face to face career fairs. So we will keep in touch and thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to take a short break. We're going to have a short lunch hour break from 12 o'clock until